Hi, this is Dr. Sami Ghazal. Today I'm going to talk to you about a case presentation of severe chronic mitral regurgitation with normal LV size and how this is even possible. So the patient is 54 year old. He presented to our emergency room with three months history of shortness of breath, which is becoming worse in the past week. And as you can see, there is a flail posterior mitral leaflet here. And there is also a big gap here. The, the coaptation, there is a mal coaptation and there is a big gap due to the flail posterior mitral leaflet. So you expect the mitral gerge to be at least severe. However, if you measure the LV size here at end of diastole, uh, it measured 5.3, which is normal for a male. And if you measure it um, at uh, end of systole, the measurement here is um, 3.1, which is still way uh, before the cutoff point of uh, mitral valve surgery. But if you look carefully here, the RV size or RVOT here is really big. The normal is up to 3 here is 4.3. Adding color Doppler here, you can see an anteriorly directed mitral regurgitation jet, which looks severe and it's wrapped around the LA. In apical four chamber view, the notable uh, feature here is a huge um, RV and a huge RA. Compared to the LV, you still can see the flail posterior mitral leaflet, but LV size is normal. And not only that, you see the LA size also is normal here, which is weird. Again, adding color Doppler, there's a lot of noise here. Um, the jet is very eccentric, so you don't see much of regurgitant jet. If we put uh, spectral pulse wave Doppler, in the mitral inflow, you can see the E-wave velocity approaching 1.8, which is indicative of um, increased LA pressure. And it's a sign of severity once it exceeded 1.2 for a native mitral valve, it's a sign of severe mitral regurgitation. Putting the sector of uh, color Doppler on the tricuspid valve, you can see here, which looks like a moderate tricuspid regurgitation, which is really expected due to the dilated RV and RA, and then you have a, a functional tricuspid regurgitation. Um, having your continuous wave Doppler um, in, in the tricuspid regurgitant jet, you, you see this image with uh, density and shape of the regurgitant jet is, is not going with severe tricuspid regurgitation. However, the velocity here and the pressure is, is very high. You can see the gradient here uh, between uh, the RA and RV is 81, so which will give you something of um, uh, 90 millimeter of mercury uh, right ventricular systolic pressure. So having this dilemma altogether, severe mitral regurg, which must be severe. And then the RV is dilated, RA is dilated, LA is normal size, LV is normal size. Then we have to do something else. We cannot stop here and say the patient does not need any intervention by now. So we, we um, decided to proceed with transesophageal echo. And as you can see here, there is a flail posterior mitral leaflet with a big um, gap in the cooptation uh, zone. RV is definitely huge. RA here is out of the uh, plane. Putting the color Doppler, you see very eccentric uh, anterior directed jet. Uh, we cannot here say if it is moderate or severe, but ha however, by having a flail and very big uh, gap, we think it's severe. However, by the color itself, it doesn't look severe in this uh, particular angle. Then we want to confirm severity. Then one sign of uh, uh, checking the severity of mitral gauge is to check the pulmonary vein and the flow in the pulmonary vein. And if there is a, a systolic flow reversal in the pulmonary veins. So this is the pulmonary veins. And as you can see, mostly it's a red flow. There is no much of blue flow. So by color itself, you don't see much of 
flow reversal during systole. Then we went ahead and we pulsed all pulmonary veins. And as you can see, there is no much uh, of uh, flow reversal. The only thing you might see here and the um, uh, left lower uh, pulmonary vein is some uh, systolic planting only without any systolic reversal. Of course, we have to use uh, some of our high tech. So applying a 3D on the mitral valve, you can clearly see uh, the flail uh, posterior mitral leaflet exactly at the P2 scallop. And you can see a part of the cord here. A rupture cord. By continuing our exam, um, we always do a full transesophageal echo exam. We don't just answer the question. And here we see an ASD of secundum type. And this might explain a lot of this interesting case. I want you to look carefully here. You can see the flail mitral leaflet tip is pointing toward this uh, ASD secundum. So you might imagine that a lot of the regurgitant jet, and instead of going to the LA, will go directly to RA, and then causing an RA dilatation with RV dilatation instead of LV dilatation and LA dilatation. Putting a color Doppler here, you can see the flow is mainly left to right. Despite, if you remember, the RVSP is approaching 90, so there is a lot of uh, pulmonary hypertension, but still the main flow here is left to right. So there is nothing uh, like a, uh, an Eisenmenger here. So it's always nice uh, to pulse any abnormal uh, flow. So we pulse the flow. We put the, the PW, the sample volume, exactly in the ASD. And here we have the systolic and diastolic flow, and it's predominantly left to right. Utilizing our uh, 3D technology here, we can measure the ASD and see it and, and describe it if it is oval, dynamic. Uh, this view, you can see the SVC is up and the IVC is down and the aorta is here. And this is the recommended view uh, by the guidelines. So now we need a decision about the mitral valve. Shall we recommend intervention or not? So to answer this question, uh, especially the LV size here is normal and it's away from uh, the cutoff point for intervention. So first we have to, to ask ourselves, is the mitral valve regurgitation severe or not? And there is no better way to do it uh, other than quantification. So let's see how can we quantify it. So the mitral valve stroke volume minus the LVOT stroke volume is the regurgitant volume. So this is the volumetric way of uh, continuity equation and how to do it. So we measure uh, the mitral annular size. We got uh, a diameter of 2.8. Also, we planimeter the uh, annular size. We think it's more accurate, uh, not assuming a circular shape of uh, the annulus. And we got here an area of 6.0. The mitral uh, inflow VTI here is uh, 11.4. So having all this information together, now we can calculate uh, the mitral valve stroke volume. So by, by calculating the mitral annular area, which is 6.0 by 3D planimetry times uh, the annular uh, VTI. So the area by 2D here, uh, we measured uh, it's 6.15, so it's 2.8 the diameter. We take the radius, which is 1.4 squared, multiply by pi, we got 6.15, which is pretty close to the 3D planimetered area. So we can use either one. Uh, however, let's use the 3D planimetered area, and we got stroke volume of 68.4, which is reasonable. 
Now let's calculate the stroke volume um, in the LVOT. So again, LVOT diameter here is 2.1, and we're going to use exactly the same way we did a minute, a minute ago. So the flow in the LVOT by applying a pulse wave Doppler, we got here a VTI of 7.8. It's not always easy to get a, a good LVOT uh, Doppler with the transistor VGL echo. Plugging all the numbers into the equation, we have an LVOT area of 3.46. Then the LVOT uh, stroke volume is uh, 27 ml, which is really low must be explained by the severe mitral regurgitation. Regurgitant volume then it is um, uh, 70 ml minus 27 and is uh, equal to 43 ml and this will give us a regurgitant fraction of 61 so 43 out of 70 is 61 percent. Another useful measurement we can get here easily is the effective regurgitant orifice area. And since we have the volume 43, simply we divide it by uh, the regurgitant VTI by continuous wave Doppler, and then we get uh, the effective regurgitant orifice area. Here we got effective regurgitant orifice area of 0.41 square centimeter, which is in the severe range. So we went back to the guidelines to check the severity of mitral regurgitation. And then now we are having um, effective regurgitant orifice area of 0 0.41, which is more than 0 0.4 squared centimeter. Again, regurgitant fraction is more than 50%. So all it goes with severe mitral regurgitation. So we decided that the mitral regurgitation here is definitely severe. And the normal LV size and LA size is explained by the presence of ASD and venting from left to right. So having that said, we should not take LV size or LV systolic dimension into account uh, when considering mitral valve uh, intervention. Now let's go to the second step, which is the shunt volume and let's quantify uh, the shunt and give it a severity grade. So we attempted a simple shunt quantification by measuring the stroke volume in the RVOT and then uh, divided by the stroke volume in the left side, which is, uh, we know it's 27 already. Again, we measured the RVOT diameter just below the um, uh, pulmonic valve and we got 3.0 centimeters. With a little bit of manipulation, we can align our uh, Doppler beam to be parallel with the flow. And then we got a VTI of 17.1. RV OT stroke volume is the area times VTI. So here we got a stroke volume of 120, which is too much. And by having this 120, we have a QPQS of 4.4 to 1. So the shunt volume here is 120 minus 27 is 93. So 93 ml is being shunted from the left atrium to the right atrium. There's another uh, interesting way to do the exact same thing is since we have um, a fixed ASD which we can measure and we have a good 3D image of it. So let's uh, measure the area and simply multiply it by the VTI across the um, defect and then we got the volume or the shunting volume. Then we can calculate also the QPQS. So we planimetered, we traced the ASD and we got an area of 1.3 squared centimeters. A good uh, pulsed wave Doppler was done to the ASD and we got a VTI of 68.8 centimeters. Plugging all the numbers into the equation, uh, we got a shunt volume of 90 ml. And if we assume that we don't know the RVOT stroke volume already to calculate the QPQS, we simply can add 90 to the LV stroke volume and then we get uh, the RV stroke volume or RVOT stroke volume and then we can calculate QPQS and here we got 116.4 which is close to what we got 
by doing um, uh, the conventional QPQS. So in conclusion, there is severe mitral regurgitation. Regurgitant volume is 43 ml. Effective regurgitant orifice area is 0.41 squared centimeter. Regurgitant fraction is 61%. And there is a hemodynamically significant AST secundum with QPQS of 4.421. There is pulmonary hypertension. The RVSP is 90 millimeter of mercury. And there is no Eisenmenger syndrome. And this is because of uh, the left to right shunt in Eisenmenger, then you will see a reverse shunt. So here it's worth mentioning Lutenbacher syndrome, which is the presence of congenital adreceptal defect and rheumatic mitral stenosis. And in Lutenbacher syndrome, there will be a delayed in uh, clinical symptoms due to the venting of the left atrium through the ASD to the right atrium. In our case, we think it's, it might be a, a special syndrome. However, instead of mitral stenosis, we're having a mitral regurgitation, which is likely acquired, and a congenital ASD defect. I hope you enjoyed the case and you find it useful. And thank you very much for watching.